In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. Hearty welcome to each one of you. My dear sisters in your convents, my dear fathers in your parishes, families at home, youth in a particular way. Hearty welcome as we are now in the last week of this retreat. The last few days of coming uh, closer to the Lord, becoming his disciples. Just today tomorrow and the after and then we are on Monday Thursday let's begin the sacrifice putting ourselves in God's presence asking his forgiveness for our sins I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts in my words what I have done what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault my most grievous fault Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison 
those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response shall be, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Kindly repeat. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? Our response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. When those who do evil draw near to devour my flesh, it is they, my enemies and foes, who stumble and fall. Our response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Do an army encamp against me, my heart would not fear. Do war break out against me, even then would I trust. Our response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. Our response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Kindly stand as we prepare hearts for the gospel. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Hail to you, our King. You alone are compassionate with our faults. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at table. Mary therefore took up a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. Having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews heard, learned that Jesus was there, they came, not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he has raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, these last three days, there is a sense of urgency in the readings as we are racing closer and closer to the most sacred three days of our liturgical calendar. Good Friday, the anticipated Good Friday on Monday, Thursday, and the completion of Good Friday on Easter Sunday. And the, the mystery of the redemption is being worked out, is being in, our, in front of our eyes as we read these readings, celebrate the liturgies. You and I try our best to get into this 
the spirit of the liturgy deeper and deeper and to understand what the Lord is telling us. The gospel passages today is John, tomorrow is John, and the after tomorrow is Matthew, but all leading towards his passion and death. The first reading for all the three days, today, tomorrow, and the after, is from Isaiah. The second part, the latter part of what they call Deuteronomy Isaiah, the latter part of Isaiah, uh, where there's a description of what Jesus is doing, written hundreds of years before it actually happened. We have a description here of the person of Jesus in the first reading, which you just heard. Speaking of Jesus, it speaks of the, the descriptions of the servant of God. And he says, I put my spirit upon him. It's a description of Jesus, but it doesn't say uh, spirit upon him. He will not, a bruised greed he will not break. A faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring out justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he establish justice. And so here you have uh, the description of what Jesus, the tenderness, the mercy, the kindness, his whole mission of bringing justice, of bringing the kingdom of God. The servant of Yahweh is sent to bring the kingdom of God. Isaiah the prophet, he himself doesn't understand fully what he is prophesying, what he is saying, but he is depicting a picture of what Jesus would do, the mission of Jesus. And so we you and I uh, contemplate Jesus, understand Jesus, talk to Jesus and tell him how much we love him and adore him because he came on earth. Isaiah did not realize he was speaking of God made man, speaking of somebody whom the Lord would raise to bring justice. In the gospel passage, it was six days before the Passover. The Passover was going to take place on Saturday so this is the Sunday, one six days before that, uh, we've got uh, Jesus comes for the last time to the house of his friends. It's his last supper with them. Monday, Thursday, he'll have his last supper with the disciples. But here with his friends, a place where very evidently he knew them well, he was friendly with them, he rested here, he felt comfortable, and they spoke about religious things, they worshipped the true Yahweh. Now Bethany was about uh, 2.2 and a half kilometers, 2.4 kilometers uh, southeast of uh, Jerusalem. And this was a town where, which was, uh, many of the pilgrims who came for the Passover feast would uh, come and stay in Bethany uh, if, Je if Jerusalem was completely filled up. Uh, we have yesterday, uh, Palm Sunday we heard from Bethany, they went to Bethphage and then to Jerusalem. Jesus went on the uh, donkey, that's the gospel passage we had on Palm Sunday. Today we have got this incident of uh, the Last Supper. Jesus, the, the incident narrated here is beautiful, just about the family. I'm sure the disciples were probably there with him, the apostles, but the focus is just on Martha, Mary, Lazarus, and a fourth figure, uh, Judas. Martha is serving. It's her house. She always was known to be serving. She probably prepared the meal, excited, did her best, worked hard. She saw this as the expression of her love, the way she could show love to Jesus. Lazarus was the one, re he had already risen from the dead because uh, Jesus had worked the miracle. And we hear at the end of this passage that um, people must have been absolutely amazed coming to see this man. You can imagine what uh, excitement to see this person who was dead and now the Lord has raised him up. He's a living proof of uh, our Lord's power, living proof of God having power over death. And therefore, as he said, uh, the best to give, to diminish Jesus' credibility is to do away with Lazarus. So they plan to kill him also. So there's no evidence that Jesus had raised him from the dead. But Mary does something extraordinary. She feels an outpouring of love towards Jesus. Possibly uh, 
the family who was so close to him began to read signs that now this, the end is near. Jesus had just one week more. Uh, there's no, nothing recorded that Jesus told them anything. But he had told his apostles over and over again. And in an outpouring of love, she takes this very precious ointment, breaks the jar and washes his feet, wipes it with her hair. And expect, just an outpour. That was the way she wanted to show her love. Martha showed her love by serving, Mary by washing his feet. And uh, Judas is upset. It's so very expensive. 300 denarii means uh, almost a year's wages. Or, so it must have been a very expensive uh, oil ointment. And the whole house was filled, they said, with the ointment. The whole house. And many commentators said, uh, talking about this, and preachers, the fathers speak of Mary's act of love was so great that the whole house was filled. The whole church is filled with this anoint, this. Uh, uh, ointment, this perfume of the ointment, uh, ointment of love. The evangelist John gives his commentary because uh, Judas is critical, says why is it, why are wasting on this, uh, uh, this oil, sell it and give it to the poor. And John immediately comments, his comment, not because he cared for the poor but because he wanted uh, more money to steal. Regrettably, Jesus showed him so much love, gave him so much responsibility, uh, entrusted him uh, because he possibly had a quality of administration, was good in handing money, but still he did not respond back. He didn't show love for Jesus here, and we know that he was cheating, and later on, very soon, he's going to betray Jesus. When somebody is prejudiced, let's, let's remove from our own hearts, my sisters and brothers today, uh, any jaundiced eyes that we might have about anybody, anything. When we don't like a person, we think that person, whatever that person uh, does is wrong. Uh, I don't think that uh, really uh, Judas thought that what she was doing was wrong. But he didn't, uh, didn't have that same love for Jesus which Mary showed. And therefore he made that remark uncalled for criticizing her uh, act of love. Jesus says, the poor you will always have with me. Let her, let her keep it for the day of my burial. Once again giving an indication of his uh, impending death, he's going to the cross. Theologically, there is so much we can learn from this. We have got to learn, we, we've got to care for the poor. That Jesus over and over again said, but if we care for the poor without understanding our vertical relationship with God, our service to the poor can become empty, spiritless. But we've got to realize that we have everything from God, we are one family, and therefore we care for those who are more needy. That is essential. That relationship to God should feed our heart for the poor. There's no opposition, but uh, the source of our care for the poor should be our love for God. And so today, as we are coming closer and closer to Good Friday, uh, think of our own worship of Jesus, our own love for Jesus, our own expressions of our affection for Jesus, and see how we could come closer and closer to him. As described in the first reading, Isaiah, but as shown so graphically by Mary when she gave her most expensive gift, just to wash the feet of Jesus. May we also do this by our love, by our actions of charity, by our prayer life. God bless you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred bear for us fruit in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the days of his saving passion, and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the hosts of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, if we may merit to be queer to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the Father, the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are, are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and, and with, with your spirit. The of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Don't only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray, and with ever watchful love, Look upon these hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries that under your protection we may keep safe at this remedy of eternal salvation, 
by which your mercy is received. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble, keep ever safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities, not only with bodily observance, above all with purity of mind. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you very much for the participation in this Mass. And this is Holy Week. And may each one of us, you and I, become holier by immersing ourselves in our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. Keep well. See you tomorrow. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah.